Hey, how's everybody doing today? First off, just want to say, get this out of the way quick. Thank you guys so much for the support on the channel. Really been really doing good. I think everybody's kind of getting excited for this season. As you guys see, it's by the title, though. I'm going to be breaking down the NFC North, giving you guys kind of my prediction of who I think is going to win the NFC North. It's not going to be that big of a shocker to you, but kind of get my thoughts on the Packers, Bears, and Lions. Kind of see where the threats are to the Vikings. And obviously, it's a Vikings channel. If you guys are a fan of the team, me making my case, I'd love for you to make your case in the comments down below on why I may be underrating your team or maybe I'm overvaluing certain players on your team. So all comments are welcome. Obviously, NFC North, it always gets a little, it's a, it always gets a little chippy preseason when we, you know it's mainly Bears, Packers, and uh, Vikings fans deciding who's gonna win it this year. But I think I got it pretty figured out. I think the NFC North is a, it's a very interesting division this year, and I'm very excited to talk about it. Anyways, like the video, comment down below. By the way, shout out on the last video. It was Kevin Stern. He left a great comment that I'll be putting up right. I'll, yeah, 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 right there. I'll put it right here, right over the bottle of Remy. He won it. He said over two and a half for Cameron Dantzler in his interceptions. You mentioned his offseason grind. You'll be seeing that right here. Anyway, shout out to Kevin. But for the next video, I want you guys to predict the order of the nfc north with record so just leave a comment vikings one they'll go 13 and four like packers two they'll go 10 and seven whatever it may be listed in order one through four give me the record predictions i'm gonna give you guys the ones i like the most that's a shout out in tomorrow's video but shout out to kevin stern he got it right here anyways let's talk about this video So I'm going to talk about the dumpster fire in the NFC North for the past couple of years, and that's the Detroit Lions. And honestly, I want to get on this video and just kind of talk bad about them, but I really can't. I think they've had a fantastic offseason. I was under the I was under the in, kind of the interpretation that they needed to get rid of Stafford to move on. I think they were in a I think they were in a relationship with Stafford where it was a it was a good relationship, but they weren't holding up their end. And I think they just needed to cut it off, in which they did. They got two first rounders in golf. I don't think Goff is anything special. I think he's a lesser version of Kirk Cousins, and I just don't think he has the experience or he doesn't have kind of the arm strength that Cousins does. And I know arm strength with Cousins. You guys might say, what the hell are you talking about? Cousins has a cannon. He's got a very strong arm. Goff does too, obviously, but I think Cousins is more refined. But the Lions, listen, they drafted Penn ICO. They also signed their uh, center to a massive deal. Their offensive line, from going last year to being a serious weakness, is a serious strength to this group now. Everybody's talking about the Kansas City Chiefs bolstering the offensive line. I think the Detroit Lions did a great job. I think they're going to try to run the ball like crazy with DeAndre Swift. And I love their coach, even though he's, he's kind of a psychopath. But just seeing his reaction to them drafting a left tackle kind of, see, kind of shows you the mentality that they're going to be playing with. They're building something. I think they're going to try to build their defense next season, but I think they're going to try to get into running the football, playing defense, and kind of going like what we do with the bootleg and everything. But anyways, I don't think the Lions will be a threat. I think they will finish fourth in division. That's why I'm talking about them first. I think they're not going to be a free win, though. I think when we have to go to Detroit or the Packers or Bears got to go to Detroit, you know, obviously no, nothing's a free win, but in the past years, it's kind of like, hey, we'll beat them. But if they can control the line of scrimmage with Penn ICO and and, you know, they got some other dudes on that Ragnar or whatever his name is. They can really get after it. So I get the Lions coming in at fourth with around five to six-ish wins. All right, so coming in at third, I actually do have the Chicago Bears. Now, no Bears fans. Bears fans love this channel. I got a couple Bears fans that listen. Listen before you guys freak out at me. I think the Bears, they got a lot of, they got, they're, they're a tough team to read this year. And it's really tough because I think, Honestly, if Justin Fields pops this year, they got a chance to win the division. But like people think if just Justin Fields works, it means the whole offense is gonna it's I mean I mean it's gonna be magically okay. Listen, they had a great draft pick with Christian, uh, I mean, not Christian Darius, that was us, uh, Tevin Jenkins out of Oklahoma State, the tackle. He's a stud. He's a mauler. I think he'll work. I think he'll be very good for that system. Uh, they have uh, Whitehair is a very good guard, and Daniels is another very good guard for them. I just, listen, the receivers are good. They have good running backs. I don't trust Nagy completely on offensive side of football yet. And I think a lot of people are assuming the Bears defense will get to how it was in 2018. And honestly, I don't think that will ever be replicated. I don't think another team can replicate what that defense did this year. And I kind of don't like the stat of saying, oh, Matt Nagy got 
Mitchell Tabisky to two playoff games and he's you know like yes he did I mean if you want to say it like that he did get him the two playoff games but also the defense was mainly what got him the two playoff games I mean that Bears defense is so dominant when they can when they have an offense that inspires them to play they are fantastic but you got to also realize you lose Kyle Fuller the secondary is a little depleted you know, Eddie Jackson had a down year last year, but I don't really, I think he'll be fine. He's still a top safety in the league. You know, Akeem Hicks, he's a dominant force, but Father Time's got to catch up to him, I'm, I'm assuming soon. I think the defense is still going to be obviously top 10, but I don't think it's going to be top five. And also, I don't think the offense is going to be, you know, bottom five. I think they're going to be floating through the 15 to 22 range. I think the defense at like the 7 to 10 range. I think they are a borderline playoff team. Listen, I think the NFC North is going to be a battle this year. I think it's going to be way better than people think. I think that I got the Bears running around 8 to 9, possibly 10 games. I think I think I would put them through 7 to 10 wins. I'm going to call it at 8 and 9 right now on the Chicago Bears. I think they're going to be I think it's going to be a building block with Justin Fields. I think he's going to show signs. I think they'll start him week 1 honestly. But I got the Bears winning 8 to 9 games this year. Got the Green Bay Packers of course at number 2 and the Vikings winning the division. You guys already know what I think about the Vikings. So I'm going to be mainly focusing on Green Bay. I have them finishing second if it's with or without Aaron Rodgers. Um and why I say this, I think that obviously they have a better chance of finishing third with Jordan Love. I don't think Jordan Love can play. I think if he was able to play, they would have shipped Rodgers immediately. But I am under the impression that Rodgers will honestly be gone. I don't, I, if I had to put my money on it, I don't think he'll be there at week one. I really don't. I just have a gut feeling. I, I just don't. I don't think he's there. I think that bandage ripped off, and I think they're. Tr I think the Packers are trying to save face right now, and I don't think Rodgers is answering. But even with Jordan Love, if the team stays the same, you know they're going to have a great offensive line. Even though they lost their center, they're still going to have a great offensive line. Bakhtiari, the whole crew, they just pump out great linemen. You still got Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. They can pound the football. You know, maybe they'll turn more towards of a running first team with Jordan Love, obviously. And then you still got these playmakers on the outside. You know, I get Rodgers. He complains a lot about not having weapons. But you look around him. Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon, Devontae Adams, Bakhtiari, you know, Lazard. And Mark, I know Scantley drops the ball like crazy, but he's also a burner over the top. I think the Packers will be fine no matter what. That's why I got them winning, I mean, around 9 to 11 games with or without Rodgers. I think, obviously, if they don't have Rodgers, it would be around 9. But with Rodgers, I think it could be around 11 to 12. I just don't see it. I just don't see them being dominant this year. I think they're going to be still be good, but I just think they'll be losing some of the juice that they have. They have a really tough schedule this year. I got the Packers finishing third. That's my prediction. Quick thoughts on them. Obviously, in first place, you got the Minnesota Vikings. Got them winning around 11 to 13 games this year. I think it's going to be a battle for the Packers, and I think the Bears can sneak in there too. I think it's going to be a battle for first place. I do think the Vikings will come out on top because I think they'll handle division games well. It's obviously all about how you start. I think they're just more of a complete team when it comes top the bottom than any other teams in the division you look at the safety corner linebacker d-line o-line now running backs receivers and i think kirk if rogers leaves kirk's the best quarterback in the division with a pretty wide gap and if that's the case vikings should go five and one six and oh in the division maybe losing in chicago or losing in green bay i just think this team's special this year i think they really will take a step up they're adding six pro bowlers to the defense that weren't there during weeks 13 through 17 last year obviously that's a big difference people forget eric kendricks anthony Barr, daniel hunter michael pierce dalvin tomlinson uh dj wonham in his second year patrick peterson coming in uh xavier woods coming in we've drafted wyatt davis an all pro guard out of uh, ohio state christian darisaw the number one pass blocking uh, left tackle out of all power fives. That's why I think Vikings will carry away with this division. I think it's going to be a battle down the stretch. Those are my quick thoughts on NFC North. Leave a like on video, comment down below. Skull Vikes and let me know what you guys think. Bears fans, bring it on. I know you guys are going to be in this video. See you guys next time. Peace.